Hello, 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 everyone. I am Prophet Dr. Dana Reese, the Eagle Prophet Visionary. Um, today is August the 15th, 2021. So I wanna share with you something that I shared earlier tonight. I did a two hour live stream on Facebook at Prophet Dr. Dana Reese and also on this YouTube channel. And so I shared a prophetic word um, that it wasn't necessarily easy for me to share, but I, I, I received a vision a few days ago um, about something pertaining to President Biden, and I really prayed about it, and I felt led to, to share it um, with you. So I'm just going to give you a very condensed version. You can go to my full version live stream and watch the full version. But, but I just want to share with you before I share that, that I have really felt a very, very strong burden in my spirit about Afghanistan and what's going on right there in that situation. Um, as a prophet, there are times that I, I will feel a heavy weight about something. Um, and, and sometimes it'll be to the point where I'm almost obsessed about it to where that's all I can think about. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, it's because you're carrying the weight of what I'm feeling because the Holy Spirit, he, he, he's, he's a person. He actually has, he feels things. And so, um, you know, the, there's a passage about not grieving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be grieved and he is grieved about injustices and things that he sees happening in the world. And so God is really grieved right now about what's going on with Afghanistan, with the Taliban taking over. And in my full version, I shared quite a bit of detail about the background of everything that is going on. But suffice it to say that it, it, it grieves God. It is not his will for the Taliban to take over Afghanistan. It, it is not what God wants. And um, I, I truly believe that both President Trump and President Biden missed it. I, I think they should have left the troops in there, but it's there's a lot of history to it that I shared on my, my earlier live stream, but just suffice it to say that God really wants us to pray because the Taliban, 20 years ago, they, they ruled um, Afghanistan, and then after 9-11, they, you know, over a period of time, they were removed, but they, they still stayed, but they weren't ruling. And so when they were ruling 20 years ago, they enacted what's called Sharia law. And this law is extremely harsh. Women are treated very poorly. Um, under Sharia law, they have to wear burkits, which is basically like a curtain that they have to wear from head to toe. And it has like just a small section with, with netting where they can see, they can see out, but the person looking at them can't see them. So their identity is removed. Um, the, the young girls, uh, beginning at the age of 15, they are married off, you know, they, to, they have no choice uh, in who they marry. Um, the, the, the women can't receive medical treatment from male doctors, so basically they can't get medical treatment. Um, under Sharia law, a woman cannot leave her house without a male guard, guard, guardian. So if she's married, that guardian would be her husband. And if she's in a situation where he's abusing her, she can't leave the house and get help. It's like she's basically, if, if she's married to a man who's abusive, she's a prisoner in her own home. Or if she's not married, it could be a cousin, brother, whatever. But the men have total control over the women that have no medical rights and also the, the young girls that they don't educate them they can't go to school so it's very very oppressive the women over there are terrified right now because um especially the women there are women over there that have been to western universities and they're really afraid that they may be they may be rounded up or punished or imprisoned or God forbid, even executed. So under Sharia law, um, it's, it's very cruel. If you steal, you can have your arm cut off. Um, if you commit a crime, 
you know, you're executed and they just hang you up in the public square. I mean, immediately, there's no, no um, due process, nothing. It's a, ve it's very barbaric. And in my opinion, it's, it's terrorism. And so what, what happened was um, when Trump was in office, he negotiated a deal with the leaders of the tele Taliban. And he said, okay, if you'll stop attacking our soldiers, that are you know in your country in your area we will let a lot of your prisoners that we have go but they told the afghanistans um the taliban that it was conditioned upon them cutting total ties with al-qaeda and isis because the taliban is more like a religious thing of course we know that al-qaeda and isis are the terrorists that blow up buildings and things like that but the problem is doing that is like asking a fox to guard um, a hen house from other foxes because they're all interlinked and so many members of the the taliban are actually intermarried with family members of al-qaeda and isis isis was based out of iraq and syria and then al-qaeda was more out of afghanistan but what happened 20 years ago was that the taliban gave refuge to these terrorist groups and so um eventually that they hid them they gave them cover and there's information now that shows that the taliban is still guarding or you know the high-ranking members of al-qaeda so terrorism is not going to go away and even before all the troops were pulled out, NATO went in there in April and did a report and they said the terms have not been met. The, the, the ties still exist between the Taliban and, you know, the terrorists or the Al-Qaeda. And, you know, President Biden had the option to go ahead and pull, leave the troops there, but he went ahead and pulled them out. So I, I'm just sharing with you what I know from what I've read and what I've studied. But I feel it was a tragic mistake, and, and the people who are going to suffer are going to be the women and also the people who are treated unjustly under the Taliban Sharia system. And also what's going to happen is the terrorist cells are going to pick back up. I mean, the, the, the door is wide open now that the terrorists are not going to go away. They're, they're going to pick back up and start doing what they were doing. And, you know, the whole world right now is it is going to be, within the next 12 months, it's going to be at a greater threat of terroristic attacks. So the, the whole thing, the whole policy was not thought out at all. So we need to pray. We really need to pray for Afghanistan, the women, the children, that, that the people in there that need to get out will be able to get out. So God, even though it is a... Islam nation God God loves them and he's he's very very grieved and concerned so we've got to pray I want to share this with you before all this happened over the past few days with the Taliban um, you know taking over Afghanistan I had a vision a few days it was like a day vision and, and it, it stunned me when I had it but just I was just going about my business and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit showed me a vision of President Biden undergoing a major health crisis. The Holy Spirit didn't tell me what what type of crisis it was. He just said major health crisis. I don't know if it's a stroke, a heart attack. I, I don't know exactly what it is. But the Holy Spirit spoke further to me and he said this health crisis, it's, it's going to put everybody around him in panic. And there's going to be a fear of him not making it. And God said he will make it. He will, he will survive, but his, he's going to be operating at a diminished capacity after this happens. And so the Holy Spirit also told me, he said, initially when it first happens, for maybe the first few days, the first week, the people around him are really going to try to kind of not, I don't know if conceal is the right word, but they're not going to want to reveal all the facts to the media. The truth will eventually come out. And so that grieves my heart. I, you know, I don't, that, that grieves my heart to hear that. But the Holy Spirit also showed me that after this happens, that his health is, is going to be such that he will not be able to run 
for a second term. And then, this is the interesting part, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit showed me an outline of, of a face, and I knew it was a man's face. Okay, I, I didn't see the features, but I did see the skin color, and I saw the hair color. It, it's a Caucasian man, he's got brown hair. I did pick up from this vision that he's a younger man. He's 50 or under. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I, God is raising this man up to be God's choice as the next president of the United States. To be honest with you, I feel that I know who it is. After God showed me that, a few days later, God brought to me the name of a person who is in political office now. He's never run for president. And, and I feel that he is the person. He is a Republican. He is a conservative let me say this, I did not see Kamala Harris or President Trump being elected as our next president. Now, I'm not saying they won't run, okay, but I, I don't, I, I did not see a vision of them. Um, I'm not, I, you know, God didn't show me clearly whether this man, you know, that he's um, positioning is going to win but he did show me that this man is his choice. Now, God did not show me conclusively who the next president is going to be, but I, I do not feel that it's going to be Kamala Harris or uh, former President Trump. But he didn't show me who won the election. He just showed me that he's anointing this man behind the scenes, okay? So just I just I just I just speak what God what God shows me. I don't have an agenda. I don't have a vested interest. I'm not involved in politics. So the Holy Spirit uses me because I don't have an agenda. I don't, I don't go by opinions. I, I just let the Holy Spirit lead me. I didn't even ask to be a prophet, okay? So I didn't ask for any of this. So I, I just, I just flow with the Holy Ghost. And so um, just wanted to share this with you because just like God positioned Supreme Court Justice Amy Conan Barrett to be uh, on the Supreme Court. And it had even been prophesied um, that by some other prophets that God was going to raise up an Esther. God is raising up an eagle. And, and you see the eagle behind me. This man that God showed me, and I know who it is, but and I know he's going to run for president because he said previously that he was, but I can't reveal his name because God hasn't released me to do that, but, but God showed me he is raising him up as an eagle. So we need to pray. We need to pray for President Biden. We need to pray um, for God's will to be done. Uh, we need to pray for former President Trump and Kamala Harris and, and everybody involved in government. We need to pray for all of them. And we need to pray for Afghanistan. So I believe that God gave me this vision to, to give to you to, to ask you to pray. So if you're an intercessor, if you are in ministry, if you have a prayer group at your church, if you have a group of intercessors that you pray with, please put down on your prayer request to pray for Afghanistan, the, uh, the women and children in Afghanistan, the Christians. I know there's some Christians in there that um and also to pray for the will of god to be done in our next presidential election and to pray for president biden and so when god gives a prophetic vision it's a snapshot it's a potential of what could happen and oftentimes god will show us things um to let us know that we need to pray and many times in the past god would give me prophetic visions about things and, and they come to pass so Sometimes God will give us a vision so that we will know to pray. So just wanted to share that with you um, as far as what God has shown me at this time. Now, things could change. It's, it's not impossible that things could change. But this is what God has shown me for this moment in time. So I want to encourage you to pray. And so um, God also spoke to me that... He said, "We at the end of my live stream, we got into praise and worship. You can watch it. And God spoke to me and said, petition granted. And he said, 21-day turnaround. And he asked me to invite 
uh, you to sow a seed into this anointing. If there's anything that you're asking the Lord for, get into praise and worship and watch what God does in 21 days. Sow a seed for petition granted in 21 days, which comes out to be September the 7th. This was not in my notes. As we got into praise and worship, God started speaking to me. I flow with the Holy Ghost. So a lot of times I'll start out with a script and he'll take me in a whole different direction. But if this is for you, I feel the anointing. I want to invite you to sow a seed for 21 day petition granted. And so, you know, Esther had so much favor with the king. All she had to do was show up. And he told her, he said, before she even asked the question, he said, whatever you ask, uh, it's granted up to half the kingdom. That's the kind of favor that God wants to release on you right now. That, that, that whatever you need, whatever you're asking for, and God spoke to me, there are people that are praying about other people. Maybe a personal relationship, a business relationship, romantic relationship. There are people right now that are praying for people, for God to deal with the hearts of people. And so, especially, you need to get a word into this, this, this anointing. And then God reminded me, this has been, oh, this has been maybe 20 years. It's been a, a while ago. And, and you can Google it. There was a, a baby girl named Jessica. They called her baby, baby Jessica. She got stuck. I think it was maybe somewhere in Texas. She got stuck in a pipe in the ground. And she was like maybe 18 months maybe two years max she got stuck in a pipe they couldn't get her out they spent hours and finally some uh, someone said well let's pour some oil i don't know if it's crisco or what kind of oil it was but they poured oil down that pipe and they were able to get that baby girl out and she's still a lot she's alive and well today you can google it and so so um i heard jane hammond who's a, a powerful prophet give a word about this and she said you know, anything that's stuck, it, it takes the anointing to, to you got to have the anointing. you got to have the oil. And so anything in your life that you've been praying about, maybe it's blocked, maybe it seems stuck, maybe it's not moving, you need to put some praise on it, which is the anointing. You need to put a seed on it, which is the anointing. You need to speak the word of God over it, which is the anointing, and watch it move within 21 days hallelujah i decree and declare that your petition is granted and you shall see a performance of the word of god hallelujah get your seed into this anointing you can sow a seed of 21 dollars. it's not a huge seed but seal it with the seed um god said there's several people that he's going to see speaking to about sowing a seed of 210 dollars you can also sow a seed of $120 and be on my next prophetic prayer call on August the 27th. If you want a one-on-one -on -one prophetic call with me, that seed is $95. And God also spoke to me that there's someone you need to turn around in 48 hours, which is, that that's quick. You need a 48-hour miracle. God said get a seed into this anointing for $48 or $480 and watch God move. Let me tell you, your seed will bring divine manifestation and acceleration. And a partner with this ministry, God spoke to her on July the 2nd to sow a $1,000 seed. She sowed a $1,000 seed. She had been praying for her husband for years. Her husband was not serving the Lord. He was not saved. She was a devoted Christian. He was actually fighting her. And he, he, he was really blocking her, to be honest with you. So she had to do a lot of things that, you know, she had to sow seeds, she had to pray, she had to do things in secret because he was coming against her. So she connected with my ministry about a year ago. We prayed, I prophesied to her a few months ago. I said, God's gonna turn your husband around. It's gonna be progressive, watch and see. Well, she sowed a thousand dollar seed July the second. She wrote me within less than thirty days. That man turned around, did a one eighty. He asked her to pray with her. He took her on a date. Um, he he started being kind to her, and she took him to see her in laws, and even they saw a difference. That's the power of a seed sown 
in obedience in anointed soil. So there's someone that God is speaking to you to sow a thousand dollar seed. Hallelujah. Because you need to turn around with your spouse just like she did. Get your seed in the ground. You can sow your seeds um, to me at Prophet Dana Reese on PayPal or Cash App Prophet Dana Reese number seven. You can sow on Venmo, Chime, Western Union. Um, anyone who sows a seed of $50 or more, I'm going to send you copies of my two ebooks, part one and part two of the Prosperity Mindset. Anyone who sows a seed of $120 or more will be on my next prophetic prayer call, and I will be praying for you. This anointing is strong, so get a seed into the ground. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, prophetdanareese at gmail.com. Um, send me your testimonies and your praise reports and watch what God is going to do for you. Keep praying. Stay in praise over the next 14 days and watch what God does. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.